people that fought and died to the last man, as you see the list. But at the same time, you can't be over number 10, 20 to 1. And, uh, well, and, and inspect a hole, it, especially with uh, uh, running out of ammo and everything else, and 20 below zero, uh, no food, nothing. It's just tough. You can't resupply a unit if you're surrounded and you have no way to resupply them, except if you do it by an airdrop, and you can do that limited, and that's it, you know. But anyway, Mac Hoffa then knew they had a problem in history. One day we'll come up and, and say that, that that if that the Chinese did not have any atomic or nuclear capabilities at that time. They right. had none. So therefore, uh, they couldn't retaliate it. And I don't think the Russians, they only had limited, and they, I, I don't even think they had a way to launch a nuclear weapon other than maybe three four hundred miles. I, I'm not certain. But they could have never reached the United States uh, or Japan at that time. So if Bank Offer wanted to use atomic weapons like we used, the A bomb they call it, in Japan. They dropped a couple of that in World War II. Right. And he was in charge of that. He knew if we dropped a couple there where they was built up, it would destroy their, their capabilities, the Chinese, of doing anything right then and there. Right. In the future, we're not sure, but right then and there. And if he'd have done that and went on and withdrew back to the 38th, I think it would have ended the whole thing. And instead of us losing all the people we lost, the Chinese probably lost five six hundred thousand people. Well, it's safe to say, though, Truman probably wouldn't have approved the use of nuclear war at that time. No, Truman said no, because he said the world opinion wouldn't stand for it. That's what he said. That's what his comment, yeah. that the other countries wouldn't stand for it. The other countries that was part of the United Nations fighting on ground had the units over there would have went along with it. Yeah. So you're talking about the, 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 the the countries that really mattered at the time, which was England, France, because we give that back to yeah, them, both of us. Yeah. So other than that, that was the Germans were still didn't have an army, right. you know, and Japan didn't have an army. And besides that, Japan would have been grateful if we'd have done that, because they never did like the Korean and Chinese in the first place. Yeah. And they're threatened by the Chinese <coughs> right now. Right. Yeah. And right now they're threatened by. Carried on again. They're right, building right, an right. They have an airstrip. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, history will finally say that that uh, it's it's hard to convince anyone. You know, I am. I'm not even sure you're convinced that we could have should have killed four or five hundred people. You know, civilians as well as military by using atomic weapons. But as a soldier, which I was taught and still believe today is that you, you you complete your mission. That's your first thing you gotta do. Whatever orders you were given, you gotta carry them out. You can't stand and argue about it and debate it. You carry out your orders regardless. And at the same time, when you carry out your orders, you look at look out for the welfare of your men. You you do what you're told to do but you do it the best way you can without losing one man that you're in charge of. Not yourself, no more than the people. Their life man matters as much as yours. Well, but they look to you to lead, so therefore you do what you're told to do, carry out your orders, but at the same time, you look looking for the welfare of your people. So it's not one and two, it's one and one A. Right. And that's what Truman did not do. Okay, he did not do that when he said we couldn't use atomic weapons. Right. He, 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 the <coughs> intelligence and the information he had was a bunch of crap if he thought that the Chinese weren't going to come in. If you looked at the past history, he would have known that this was the time for him to settle up and maybe end up getting Formosa back, yeah. you know, and, uh, and and get what they want. And, and, and so, so 
so they figured this was the ideal time. And I'm not knocking the leaders of China other than say they really knew that they weren't going to die, so they really didn't care about uh, about losing right five or six hundred soldiers. They didn't care about that. That was the last thing on their mind. As a matter of fact, we've done them a favor because they were saving them the food and the weapons and everything else. Right. They had more people than they had food, food in the military and more people than they had weapons. Right. They couldn't give everybody a rifle. You had to wait till someone in front of you died. And I saw that. Right. They were, well, you kill the first wave that was coming to you. And someone would come up behind them and pick up the weapon and keep coming. And just keep coming. And you never did eliminate them. Well, General Ridgway, when he takes over after MacArthur, he goes with the concept, we'll spray lead. Well, let's not throw bodies at it, let's throw army at it, let's throw material at it. They just keep spraying lead at it. Well, the, 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 see, all this frustration and history and all, and people are not dumb, you know, they read and study this, and I'm not an educated guy, but I know now, if I'd have known then what I know now, things might have been different. I don't know. But uh, this is my little part of it. But but the thing is, you, the people look at the Mali incident with Cali in Vietnam when he lined up everybody in that village, women, kids, and all, and they shot over 100 of them and killed them right there. And uh, it would have never been brought to attention except for American politics. Chumpa Pollitt happened to see it and land and tried to stop it. Yeah. And say, you need to notify the news agency. And of course, it, they, that's the way it broke out. But the normal person look at Cal and say, well, there's no sense in killing women and kids and everything else. But the point was that his outfit was sent to that village day after day. And every time they lose somebody with a booby trap or something like that, every time. So he's his outfit, his platoon, was being eliminated one by one each Peace time he was sent. So they knew when they headed out, the whole platoon, when they headed out, they knew that at least one wasn't coming back or one would come back with no arms or legs. They knew that. They didn't know who it was, but they knew one of the 30, 40 was going to be lost that day. So you imagine you start out with odds uh, one or thirty, that's not too good of odds. No, it's a dice out of one. Right, so you know you might be the one. So when whoever decided to line them up, I don't think Kelly being a lieutenant was really totally in charge at the time, but he was responsible. And he had non commissioned officers, you had people that had lost their friends and everything else. And when they lined them up and somebody fired, they started shooting them all. And, uh, and uh, well, Just kind of like a I can understand the frustration. There's no justification for it, but it just goes back to what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, you look out for the welfare of your people. How far you go, I don't know. But using an atomic weapon at that time wouldn't have been too far. Yeah. That's that. We, we didn't start this thing. Right. But we became the aggressors. I want you to know that. Understood. We see when let, me be, let me be clear about the aggressive part, though. The only reason why the UN crossed the 38th parallel when you pushed the Chinese back off the Pusan the North Koreans, yeah. The North Koreans already jumped the 38th. Right. We basically followed they, them. They came all the way down almost to Pusan. Yeah. Okay, they had already done that. Mm -hmm. So the reason we made the, um, uh, the reason we, we made the beachhead and Incheon and Ewan or whatever, and and, so, and cut them off, and they started withdrawing the numbers. The reason we did that because you had to defeat the army. Just going up back to the 38th and staying there and finding one another for years wouldn't have solved anything. Yeah. So he had to eliminate the cause. The cause was an offer in his army, and we destroyed them. So we should have stopped then. Right. When we destroyed them, they were destroyed a month or two before the Chinese come into the war. Right. So we had plenty of time. Right. Plenty of time to to uh, use the judgment and in, in the history and say, here yeah, you have your country back. Okay. And regardless of friendly enemy, 
we saved England, we give French back to them. They lost the whole country, give and plus not down on them. And get right, we give it all back to them. But we actually stayed occupied. That's why I have kind of a problem with this whole Iraq and thing. They were, they were, what they would have done. They would occupied North Korea and still be occupying it. And even if the Chinese hadn't come in, you'd have had border problems. Lord knows how many border problems you'd had by now. We don't need to be on their border. Yeah. Our country is not borders China. Right. We don't border Russia. You follow me? Right. That's and right. here now, and Senator McCain, I have the biggest respect for him because of the PW five and a half years. Mm -hmm. For him getting up there on TV and keep saying that we need to put boots on the ground, he's wrong. I think he's Whose boots does he want to put there? I mean, and and and, and you put, do you want to put the division or a corps? Or what? How many troops are you gonna put on the ground over there in Iraq and and and, and those other countries fighting now? And they've been fighting for ten thousand years. We fought in Iraq for twelve years and gave the country back to them, plus all new equipment, Bobby, and everything else. You follow me? Yes, sir. All the new equipment, artillery, trucks, weapons, and everything else. And, they flipped and it the over. first shot that was fired by, I don't care who it was, it could right. have been me. Fired one shot, they all just left the equipment in place, took the uniforms off, laid everything down, and, and took off and trying to say, oh, I'm me no soldier, me, me civilian. Yeah. The whole army we trained. So now they want to get back over there now and, and train them again. It don't even make sense. Obama knows that, but you can't train them. So therefore, as a, a senator that's on the Armed Forces Committee, with Lindsey Graham's on it, yeah. both of them, they both get on TV and say, we need to put troops on the ground and bombing airstrikes won't win. You ain't going to win regardless of what you do. Well, we won, and we give it back to them. And what happened? You cannot occupy the entire world, and nobody else is willing to do it. The Germans, France, Britain—they'll help out, but they're not willing to take responsibility. So yeah. nobody's going to. And you got the countries up here. You got Saudi Arabia, one of the richest oil people going. They got billions and billions and trillions of dollars. And hell, we still paying them. And they should be paying us. Just the Kuwait the same way. Kuwait's got more oil than anybody would use for a hundred years, and here we are having the troops out to guard them against what? And nobody's going to invade them for not the next 25, 30 years. Yeah. The Isaac's the only one they have to worry about now, and and there's enough countries over there. Let them do it. Let Iran fight. And when last we talked, you made a good point. You say they have boots on the ground, but they don't ask the second question. How many boots are they willing to leave? Well, that's what I asked them. Say, mm -hmm. I already didn't ask them that. How many boots you want to leave over that? If you put a brigade over that, 4,000 people, 500 pair of boots are going to stay with the bodies, okay? There's no doubt about it. Put a division over that, and you're going to lose 3,000 people. I'm talking about KIAs. Not arms and legs and everything else. Yeah, we're talking nobody right. coming back, no part so of it. So the thing, the thing is, is it ain't worth it. Ain't a country over there worth one GI's life. It's as simple as that. And what are we trying to gain? I don't know. Isaac cannot invade the U.S. They can have tourist attacks, and we're going to have them anyway. I just, yeah. Hell with Isaac. We're going to have the damn things anyway because you got enough people here they are doing themselves. Right. You know, it's unhappy in your right. one -offs in the United States. Sleeper cells and right. that bullshit. Not thief. Yeah. Let me take a break and see what's going on up there. Right here, sir. I didn't mean to give a speech. No, but it was an excellent one. It just upsets the hell out of me.